Dear all, welcome to the plenary session of Commonwealth Organization for Social Work known as COSWA. I am Dr. Sylvia Daisy Romanus from Madras Christian College, India and I am the chair of COSWA. COSWA is an organization for social workers and others who are interested in supporting the development of social work across the Commonwealth. COSWA aims to make sure that the voice of social work is heard in all processes of Commonwealth. But what is Commonwealth? Commonwealth was formed in the year 1949 and there are 54 member countries uh, which are independent and equal. Most of the countries share a common colonial history and Commonwealth is open to all. Commonwealth has representation from developing nations and the developed nations. Say for example, the COSWA board has representation from countries like Australia, Zambia, Kenya, Canada, Barbados, India, Malaysia, United Kingdom and so on. The Commonwealth has um, small island states as members. The Commonwealth Charter promotes values like prosperity, peace and sustainable development. Commonwealth Organization for Social Work, COSWA, is an accredited organization. And there are around 80 accredited organizations to the Commonwealth. COSWA works closely with the partner organizations of the Commonwealth. And today we have few speakers who are coming together to share their thoughts in this session. And now I hand over the session to Dr. David to introduce the speakers from the partner organizations. Over to you, Dr. David. Well, thank you very much, Sylvia, for that introduction. And I'm now very pleased to introduce our guests for this plenary. Social work always involves partnership working. It's very difficult indeed to do social work on your own. Um, of course, there's always the people that you're working with directly, but we also have to work all the time with other agencies. And social workers know very well that those partnerships make all the difference. So in this plenary, COSWA, the Commonwealth Organization for Social Work, has asked some of our partners to join us to demonstrate that partnership in action. And there are three different segments to this um, plenary. The first segment is from the Commonwealth Nurses and Midwives Federation. And we're very honored that Professor Kathleen McCourt, the president of the uh, Commonwealth Nurses and Midwives Federation, is going to talk to us first about the connections between nurses and midwives and social work. We are both members of the Commonwealth Health Professions and Partners Alliance. And that group involves doctors and pharmacists and a range of other professionals working in the health and social services arena. So our thanks to our first speaker, Kathleen McCourt. Our second speaker is Andrew Larpent, who is the chairman of Common Age, which is the Commonwealth Association for the Aging. Andrew has been a champion of the rights of older people within the Commonwealth and more widely. And he's going to talk to us about working with older people and the important role of social work in that context. And finally, we have Peter Oborn, the Senior Vice President of the Commonwealth Architects Association. Um, and he is very involved with a range of other people in the call for action on sustainable urbanization. We know that cities are going to continue to grow um, very fast and that cities end up being extremely unhealthy places and indeed unsocial places, unless there is a focus on sustainability in urbanization. 
So the call to action has come from the Commonwealth Association of Universities, the Commonwealth Architects Association, the Commonwealth Association of Planners, and the Commonwealth Local Government Forum. And COSWA is very pleased to be supporting uh, this call to action because social workers know that all these elements of the built environment, the physical environment and the social environment, local government and health, all of these things make a difference and have an impact on social problems. And you will see that the call to action includes a video which was made for another purpose, but includes some very eminent speakers, including the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, and His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, who is uh, championing the call to action. So let us hear from these three speakers, these three videos, about partnership working between social work and other partners across the Commonwealth. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to share a short message from the Commonwealth Nurses and Midwives Federation to this important global summit co-building a new eco-social world, leading, leaving no one behind. How health professionals understand health has come a very long way in my lifetime. The traditional approach of professional silos with hard barriers and a view of health, both physical and mental, as the absence of disease has fortunately been replaced by a much broader understanding of what it is meant to be healthy. I well remember the outcry when nurses first took on some traditionally medical tasks, such as endoscopies and prescribing, when physiotherapists said it made sense for them to be able to dress wounds, when pharmacists laid claim to well baby clinics, immunisation and vaccinations, and when optometrists started looking into eyes, not just testing vision. The dire predictions of disaster that were made did not, of course, eventuate. While all health professionals have a unique body of knowledge and scope of practice, the partnership approach with common sense, flexibility and task sharing are essential if the client is to be at the centre of care. Social workers have made a significant contribution to this new understanding, particularly for doctors and nurses. Understanding the impact and importance of social and environmental factors on health and well-being, housing, and education, employment, good nutrition, safe water, sanitation, air quality, safety. Nurses understand and are taught that being able to navigate daily life and its setbacks and challenges without debilitating stress, frustration, anxiety or sadness along with the capacity to experience joy, hope and happiness, is dependent on more than just being physically and mentally strong, healthy and free of disease. Health and well-being are inextricably linked to a stable, satisfying and secure family and social environment, a stable political environment and a healthy planet. The COVID-19 pandemic clearly demonstrates the interconnectedness of our world. The pandemic did not recognise country borders. Clearly recognising the spread of the virus and the imperative of vaccination, countries and their leaders failed to embrace the opportunity to demonstrate global solidarity and partnerships by walking hand in hand to deliver vaccine equity. The 54 countries of the Commonwealth of Nations failed miserably also to live up to its charter, to be a compelling force for good and an effective network for cooperation. With vaccine rates in wealthy Commonwealth countries in March 22 of 92%, while vaccine rates in the poorest Commonwealth country countries were as low as 3%. Political upheaval in many countries leads all too often to internal conflict and displacement and the tragedy of refugees risking their lives and those of their families to seek a safer, kinder and healthier life. In many countries, these conflicts appear to have no solution. Yemen, Syria, Afghanistan and some countries in West Africa. The tragedy unfolding in the Ukraine affects us all, 
if not emotionally, then with disrupted food supplies and higher costs. Climate change is another area where political decision making and a lack of political will to make the hard and long term decisions are having a negative impact on health and well-being across the globe. In every country, we see increased extreme weather events, leading to fires, floods and crop failure, leading to food shortages, malnutrition and starvation. The five P's of sustainable development are said to be people, planet with, and partnerships for peace and prosperity. There are many times when these goals appear to be too ambitious and unattainable, and yet, if we do not have such lofty and hopeful ambitions, what do we have? This session is titled Commonwealth Partnerships, Co-Building a New Eco-Social World. I would like to commend the work of the Commonwealth Organisation for Social Work. In 2009, the Commonwealth Nurses and Midwives Federation was a driving force in establishing the Commonwealth Health Professions Alliance, an alliance of Commonwealth accredited health professional organisations such as doctors, nurses, dentists and pharmacists. The partnership was a positive one, to work together, not in isolation from each other, to improve the health of the peoples of the Commonwealth by supporting health professionals in Commonwealth countries. The focus, however, was narrow. The Commonwealth Organisation for Social Work has been instrumental in bringing the wellbeing dimension into the discussion in all of the forums where Commonwealth accredited organisations meet. We now embrace health and wellbeing rather than just health. The Commonwealth Health Professions Alliance is now a Commonwealth Health Professions and Partners Alliance. COVID-19 has taught us all that we are partners in care. Doctors, nurses, dentists, pharmacists, social workers, psychologists, administrators, clerks, porters, drivers, cooks and cleaners. We are interdependent and that is a really positive learning in the same way our health and well-being are interdependent on the health of our world. You cannot separate human health, animal health and planetary health. There is a symbiotic relationship where one part cannot be healthy if the other parts are unhealthy. The Commonwealth Nurses and Midwives Federation embraces the One Health approach and is committed to fostering and sustaining partnerships with other health professionals, health workers, activists, activists, advocates, politicians, environmentalists, anyone and everyone who is working towards an equitable world of peace and prosperity for all. We look forward to sharing that journey with you. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. My name is Andrew Larpent, and I am the chairman of the Commonwealth Association for the Aging. That's Common Age for short. And I'm delighted to have this opportunity to bring this short presentation to you. Our purpose is to promote the interests of older citizens in all Commonwealth countries and to improve the quality of their lives through advocacy, shared learning, experience and best practice in social service and care design, development and provision. To achieve our purpose, we've adopted a twin track approach of advocacy and policy development and secondly, of service development and delivery. In our advocacy work, we're looking to challenge what we see as the inadvertent but insidious institutionalized ageism that is creeping into the public discourse. And we want to work for an all age friendly Commonwealth in which no group of society and society is left behind 
uh, on account of their age, be they young or old. We want to promote the health and well-being of people of all ages. And in particular, in that respect, we are promoting the United Nations and World Health Organization and their decade of healthy aging 2020 to 2030. Above all, we want to celebrate and respect older people and acknowledge and promote their contribution to civil society. In terms of service development and delivery, uh, we're working wherever we can to ensure that standards for services for older people are raised to the highest possible level and to promote national accreditation systems. We're supporting the social policy development. We're promoting innovation and creativity in the design of services for older people. And we're seeking to share and promote best practice in care, in housing for the elderly and in community services. We are not alone in our work and some of the organisations with whom we work in partnership include the Independent Forum of Commonwealth Organisations, the Worldwide Global Ageing Network, the Global Alliance for the Rights of Older People, Help Age International, and the organisation with whom we're partnering today for this meeting, the Commonwealth Organisation for Social Work. We're particularly proud to support the work of social workers throughout the Commonwealth. Older people in our Commonwealth countries have amazing stories to tell. We must make sure that they're given the opportunity to tell them and we must listen to their experience. We should celebrate the lives of older people and make sure that the energy and vitality of young people is combined and blended with the wisdom and experience of elders. We wish you well for your meeting today. Uh, if you wish to know more about Common Age, then do please visit our website at www.comage.org. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me to be part of the People's Global Summit. My name is Peter Oborn, and I'm Senior Vice President of the Commonwealth Association of Architects, one of the authors of a call to action on sustainable urbanization across the Commonwealth. With Commonwealth countries forecast to account for nearly 50% of the projected growth in cities to 2050, that's an additional 1 billion city dwellers in Commonwealth countries in the next 30 years. Urbanization is a defining issue for the Commonwealth. Recognizing the nature and scale of the challenge ahead, Commonwealth partners, including the Association of Commonwealth Universities, the Commonwealth Association of Architects, the Commonwealth Association of Planners, and the Commonwealth Local Government Forum, have come together with the Government of Rwanda and the Princess Foundation to issue a call to action on sustainable urbanization across the Commonwealth. We welcome the support received from the Commonwealth Association for Social Work and would like to share with you some highlights from a meeting hosted by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales immediately prior to COP26 last year. We look forward to working with you and your members as we all grapple with the challenge of leaving no place and no one behind. The um, Commonwealth Call to Action seems to me to provide uh, a really perfect rallying point for Commonwealth member states, uh, central and local governments, civil society, uh, and organizations at all levels uh, to come together seriously to support and deliver real and transformational change through the way that we plan and, uh, and manage our cities and human settlements. I mean, sustainable urban development is clearly critical in responding to uh, the climate emergency. We know that bad urbanisation will be a problem, to put it mildly. Um, and, and many, most of the world's population living in cities that are on the front line of climate change will pay a disproportionate price for that. But I think there's also an opportunity that good urbanisation is part of the solution. 
And as the world's population grows, if we rethink, reconceptualize, replan, and design good cities that are low impact, uh, decarbonize, support nature, then actually cities could be part of the solution of the world being home to a growing global population. But with 70% of global carbon emissions coming from cities, ending climate change begins in cities. So um, as you've already identified, this is a vitally important um, topic for Commonwealth countries. And the scale of the challenge needs to be met by the scale and the speed of the response. One billion people are going to join our Commonwealth in the next 30 years. And 95% of the growth in urban areas are going to take place in Asia and Africa. So it couldn't be more important for our Commonwealth family that we target this issue. And the beauty of the Commonwealth is we're 2.5 billion people, 60% of whom are under the age of 30, and we are already committed through our charter to these values. And we know that if we can form the pathway and show what action together actually can deliver, it'll make a huge difference. The colleagues, uh, as you know, 65% of the 169 target of the Sustainable Development Goals are attributed to urban and territorial uh, development. So as the uh, United Nations Secretary General said, urbanization is an un unstoppable mega trend. So I am very, very impressed with the leadership of the Commonwealth of Nations for the leadership in making urbanization a force for good. The UN Habitat is with the Commonwealth of Nations and we applaud the advocacy, action-oriented approaches and the spirit of togetherness. And this is the bedrock of multilateral effort to create a better tomorrow. They will, you know, first of all, we want to express total solidarity with the Commonwealth con uh, call for action for uh, sustainable urbanization, sustainable cities and sustainable habitats. So therefore, it's extremely important for urbanization, you know, good urbanization, good urban planning. And I just want to mention that, you know, mayors are so important, so critical. So at, under these circumstances, we must have collaboration and learning and knowledge sharing between mayors, uh, capacity building of mayors and urban planners and architects, of course, communities, because communities, you know, there's so many community organizations and then public-private partnership. We must have the private sector team up with the mayor's municipalities. Um, as an economist, I can assure you that this call to action focuses on one of the most important economic forces of our time. Because across history and across the globe, we know that people have been flocking to cities in search of opportunities for jobs, for services, but perhaps most importantly, to improve the lives of future generations. Following people, firms are also locating in cities in search for labor, in search for markets, in search for infrastructure, and ideas for innovation. And these economic forces that bring people and firms together in dense environments, if managed well through suitable economic and spatial policies, can be a major driver for economic growth. And I think we importantly have to remember it's not only for the cities themselves, but for the countries, the regions, and the globe that we are all located in. There is an urgent need for us to reimagine our cities with the urban poor at the heart of such a vision. We must focus on affordable housing and the provision of basic services like water, sanitation, and hygiene that we all tend to take for granted. The time for water sensitive urban design and planning is now. We need to improve our institutions for governance and planning and ensure that the voices of all citizens are heard. We need clear intent and vision. We need investment. We need enterprise. And more importantly, we need empathy. The youth force is the source of passion, creativity, and admirable commitment to the cause. We need to bring the youth of Commonwealth nations together and nurture the young leaders with the right opportunities to envision a sustainable future for our world. I think what we've learned is that if we do what we've always done, we're going to get what we always got. And we know that that isn't going to deliver the future we need. So what are we going to do differently? And I think we've heard this morning from almost all of the speakers that we need transformational change. We need to break down barriers. We need to work in a more integrated manner across sectors and across disciplines. We need more effective working between central government, between local government, between built environment professionals, between universities and the private sector. And we need to share our knowledge and our resources more effectively. When we 
think about that, how that fits with what we're here for today in response to a call for action, not a call for declarations and statements uh, and the publication of, uh, of more plans, although we obviously need to plan, uh, but it is a call for action. The, the urgency uh, of these issues demands real and decisive action. And this is why I, I've been so encouraged to see this collaborative, interdisciplinary uh, Commonwealth partnership forged and now growing over the last two years, despite the added challenge of COVID-19 and indeed made all the more important and imperative uh, and relevant by all these challenges. Well, we've come to the end of this plenary, and it's my job to say thank you to our contributors and to hope that you have been interested in seeing the range of activities and partnerships across the Commonwealth and particularly to reflect on the contribution of social work. So my thanks go to uh, Dr. Sylvia Daisy Ramanas, our chair of COSWA based in Chennai in India, Thank you for your welcome and introduction, Sylvia. Our thanks also to Professor Kathleen McCourt from the Commonwealth Nurses and Midwives Federation, to Andrew Larpent on the, from the uh, Commonwealth Association for the Aging, and to Peter Oborn from the Commonwealth Architects Association and all the contributors to the video on sustainable urbanization. Working together is what this summit is about, co-building, co-working. And we hope we have demonstrated the importance of social work in that working together in a range of different partnerships. And we hope this has stimulated you to think more about how to make partnerships work. And that it gives us all a renewed energy and understanding that human existence is about partnerships. It's about working together not about conflict. And that is a strong message I hope will go forth from this summit. So from the Commonwealth Organization for Social Work and our chair, Dr. Sylvia Daisy Romanos, thank you for watching.